so he has gotten nothing if not cuter since he's moved in here begging me for food in the morning just listen Listen to that. Listen to that purr. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, so let's see how well this thing actually works. If it records in stereo or mono, how well the autofocus works, and the lens is dirty. Yay. That's to be expected. Who knows how long this thing's been sitting around. It is a 12 megapixel camera, but it only does 720p. And the LCD is of questionable quality. Hmm. How long will it do recordings is another, is another question. Really? <clears throat> That's what do y'all say? You got something on your head. <laughs> He's still there. You got a little thing on his head. He's such a love bug in here. I think it's because he thinks he's gonna get food right off right off the bat. But he's not. But he loves getting pets in here, so I come pet him in here every now and then. This onboard LCD is like flashing all over the place. I wonder how the video is doing. Yeah, he's a friendly kitty. He's a friendly... Oh, he's going to lick himself now. He does that a lot. <clears throat> so. I've got a Kodak Easy Share Z1285 here that I just picked up from an estate sale. And this is its test video, which I am doing with my kitty cat, who is being very affectionate, of course, because he's in the kitchen. He's always affectionate in the kitchen. It's because he wants food and he thinks I'm going to give it to him or something. Ain't that right? He thinks he's going to get food because we're in the kitchen. So, no telling how long this thing will actually stay recording before it automatically shuts itself off. But he says hi. <laughs> oh, and uh, this is a new thing I just did recently did rope lights all up underneath the cabinets and on the floor and I've got them on a timer in here I actually have an outlet in here that was already here when I got the place so this white plug on the bottom actually goes to a light that's up here so I guess so I can see well in my pantry I don't know <laughs> this piece is supposed to be over the over the bulb but for some reason it fell off, I guess. I don't know. So I just used that outlet there, put a little timer on it, and uh, wow, the LCD is really going nuts now. And then over here, because of the way... Because, <laughs> okay. Really? Really? You see, if I pet him enough and I get walking around, he'll be permeowing like crazy. I love it. <laughs> My permeower. And now you're not going to do it. <laughs> He's such a nut. My towel up here is getting dirty. Oh, mosquito! Die! Where did he go? I want to make sure that how for long doesn't get me again. Of mosquitoes. Meow. 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 Really? Okay. I need to pick this up anyway. It's gonna go in the sink. Really? <laughs> <clears throat> like I soak them, I dump them, wipe them off, put food on them. It works. Doesn't it, buddy? Doesn't that work? Yes, it does. 
<laughs> okay, well, I think I've gone on long enough on this stupid clip. Like, anyway, I was saying something about these LEDs. Uh, the fact that they usually have them hooked up, so they get AC power. But LEDs like DC power. So, if you, put, if you hook these guys up to AC power, of course, they're going to be flickery. One's on, or uh, turning off and on once every 60th of a second. So, I kind of did something here that negates that effect. That is a rectifier bridge chip. It's got four pins. Two pins are for the AC, and then the other two pins that are sticking out here are the DC output from the chip. And by doing that... I actually get DC power to the LEDs, which they like far better than AC power, and they'll probably last a lot longer. So that's that, <clears throat> and my, uh, <clears throat> my throat has been giving me all sorts of crap the last couple of days, I think because it's been getting cooler outside, and I haven't been running the heater in here much at all, so if you look here, it's 59 degrees outside with a 47% humidity. Down here, we've got the inside temperature and humidity, 65 and 40. Uh, the 38's the dew point. But, yeah. And the lowest it's gotten in here the last couple of days. Let's see. Where's my indoor temperature? I've got a low of 61 this morning. And uh, my records. Yeah, that was set just yesterday. All-time high of 109 on the September 25th. Yeah, so that's that. And I'm thinking I might go ahead and turn that heater on here in the next couple minutes because, yeah, it's getting a little cold and I'm getting sniffly. and I just don't want to deal with that. But anyway, these guys should last a lot longer. They're actually still flashing, believe it or not, but it's at 1 20th of a second, so it's not quite as visible of a flash unless I get a slow motion camera like my GoPro and then you'll see it. But right now, I'm going to go and see how well this video does once I get it onto my computer, which is waiting for me to do stuff. So, that is the end of this 6 minute and 45 second clip. Okay, so that video absolutely freaking sucked. <laughs> this camera is not worth a dang. Yeah, takes double A's. Those work fine. I had, I had trouble getting the thing to even power on at first, but, uh, yeah. Now that I've seen the video that come from it, it looks the way it does. Yeah, I am not going to be using it for anything. However, I might be able to get this guy working properly again. Because right now, it is stuck looking about like that. And this is another thing I picked up from the same estate sale, so I'm going to try to get it fixed up real quick. I've already got screws loose, and one of them is refusing to fall out. But of course. Ah, meanwhile, I've got this thing up, and uh, Buddy's already claimed that spot underneath it. <clears throat> of course, when he's not running around as it is. So I'm going to see if I can get this guy opened up and see if it's anything I can fix. I'm hoping so. It'd be kind of cool to have another motorized clock around. Not looking very promising because of the way this thing is, like, it looks a little messed up. So we'll see. Well, I guess one might say I've very well gotten this thing torn down quite a bit. My hours are now off the spool, and my minutes are now off the spool, and going the way they're supposed to. Buddy's trying to get in on the action here, of course. Because that's what he does. No, you cannot play with the gears. I do not need to be losing this stuff. I want to put it back together and get it working again. So, yeah. It's down in several pieces right now, including this part, which really I don't need to do anything with. Actually, what I need to do is plug it in and verify that the motor even works. Because my Panasonic, the one in my bedroom right now, I have to kind of give it a little bit of a push to get it to start running. So, uh, let's see if this one will actually run by itself. And it looks like it's got about the same problem mine does. 
It has to be given a little nudge to start. Sure enough. Doesn't sound very good either. What the f So yeah, I'm gonna have to do something about that. Probably need some lube oil, like three in one or something. Cause that doesn't sound good. <laughs> Not good at all. And the fact that it doesn't start up by itself, yeah, that's gonna be a bit of a problem. Because this one's even farther shoved up in here. You know, I could probably modify the Panasonic so that I can get in here and manually start it. But this one's gonna be a little bit more difficult to get to. Dang, that thing sounds terrible. Hmm. But the radio works. I've already verified that. Get holiday ready with over 4,400. So, I guess that's one thing at least. Jeez. That sounds terrible. Oh. Well, that sounds better. <laughs> Maybe it just doesn't like being held vertically. Because it is mounted this way. So. Hmm. Yeah, it just doesn't like that. But it still doesn't start up by itself, so. That's going to be an issue. Ah, oh, but it does when it's sitting sideways. Yeah. Okay. So I just might put some three-in-one oil in the gearbox and call it good if I can get this part back together. Okay, I'm going to shut you off now. Because that just does not sound good. It can't be good. So, let's see how well I can manage to get this thing back together. It's got all these little keeper clips and gears and gears and more keeper clips and keeper clips and another gear and another gear and another keeper clip and it's just a whole big hodgepodge of mechanical stuff hooked up to an electronic motor. And then of course there's all this stuff for the radio. So, great. Okay, a little something I forgot to mention here. Okay, check this out. The way this clock is supposed to work, you got the hour hand... Oh, I don't know why I say hand. It's a flip number. Anyway, here's the main body. That little deal there. I'll come to that in just a second. Uh, let's go back to 39. That'll work. Okay, on here, you see there's this little beveled area along the edge here. Right? Kind of flips upward. And it goes on. And as the numbers go. And then towards the end, you get 59. And then you've got that little tab there right on the 59 and then you flip that over and there's the edge where what's supposed to be held by that this is what's supposed to be held by that this right here little tab <clears throat> under normal working circumstances this little tab here would keep the hour from flipping down too soon but as you can see it's facing completely the wrong direction because the minutes go on this side and the hour goes on this side. This little tab was bent over backward. So it's not doing anything right now except keeping the minute reel from moving at all. So the biggest part is going to be getting this thing bent back the right direction for one so that it'll actually function properly. And then we can worry about putting this thing back together and hope it goes well okay there we go now it's kind of sort of straight hopefully enough to work yeah there we go so hopefully that'll work and we'll see once I get the thing put back together but you see that little tab there holds on to the very edge of the number and then once 59 goes by and it goes back to zero then it allows it to fall so alright <sighs> Let's see if I can get this junk mess back together. Okay, so I've got this thing back together enough to where you can basically see what's supposed to happen here. Now, obviously it's not very good because it's not very much put back together, but you can see that tab right there is supposed to hold the hour in hand, or is supposed to hold the hour real until it reaches 
59 and then it flips over and then it goes but we need to get it back together more okay now this thing is set up the way it's supposed to be and I found out I have to get it geared just right or it won't work <laughs> so now as you can see that little tab there is doing its job by getting in the way of the next hour and then the next hour comes and you see it's flipped down but that tab on the right is holding it in place but then doink, 3 o'clock in the morning and that's the basic premise of how this sucker works because there's two hours or yeah two hours for, two hour numbers for every hour which is kind of odd but I guess it works I'm not sure why they did it that way but that's the way it's supposed to work and I actually found out by accident you have to get these two aligned just right and then set this gear right here uh, and I just broke it again <laughs> otherwise you'll end up switching it over on the wrong time like I'll show you right now like, so instead of it flipping over there it's not gonna flip at all and then that's gonna fall in place and the five's not gonna move and then it's gonna be six but then it's gonna flip down way too soon actually that could work but that's not the way it's supposed to work so I'm gonna push it back some <laughs> To the way it was before I screwed it up. Well, I've got the mechanics back together and all the screws are in place except for the ones that hold the whole thing in place and this bit and this bit and the speakers just slid in place so that's easy enough. And uh, found out along the way that the alarm reel has to be set kind of like these guys do. They have to sync up just right. But unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen with me doing it. Because <laughs> I just can't seem to get it right. And this really isn't supposed to be able to go backward, I don't think. And I'm thinking that's probably why it got screwed up in the first place. Because it got flipped backward and the numbers got stuck. So, not cool. So, anyway, I got it to where it's like not even close but it's at least within the same hour and why won't you focus okay so let's say I got it set for three o'clock right nope I just screwed it up again okay let's go around again now let's say I'm going for three o'clock and this thing's already close enough but I can't get these mad gears to line up to save my life, so instead of going off at 3, it's going to go off at like 3, 16 or whatever the fuck that was. And then, when I keep going, it doesn't spring back like it's supposed to, but it locks up the freaking gear, so I'm like half tempted to just rip out the whole mad alarm segment to begin with. I mean, really, I'm not going to be using this thing as a freaking alarm clock, for real. It's a piece of junk. Mine works so much better. Anyway, so I got it all back together, and now I'm going to see if this motor will start itself or if it has to be forced. Because if it has to be forced, I'm just not even going to bother putting it back together. I'm just going to tear the whole stupid thing apart. Plugging in. It starts itself! Wow! That does one thing better than mine does. I'll be darned. Now the real question is, will it keep time? Alright, now that I know the motor will actually start, I'm going to put this thing back together in one piece and hook it up and see if it goes. Well, it's official. This thing doesn't work at all. Except for the radio. The radio is the only thing that works. This thing can go on forever and ever. With the hand crank. But the motor will never run it. Even though the motor is running. Noted. The motor is running in there. But I looked back on the footage a little bit. And noted something. It looks like when I went to set the time. And I was able to go backward like you're not supposed to be able to do. 
I'm thinking there is a broken gear inside the gearbox behind the motor. So that's just fantastic and this thing will never work properly. In fact, I'm trying to set the freaking alarm and the clock is going backwards. Seriously? WTF. <laughs> so, yeah. Looks like this one's toast. Oh well. General Electric 7-4300A. No telling when it was made. I don't really care, honestly, anymore. Things giving me enough trouble and I don't even care. Yeah, Makes a good radio though. That's all it is. <laughs> oh well. Okay, to elaborate further on what I meant by I could see the output shaft of this thing spinning. I actually yeah, I just took the whole thing apart again. <laughs> but yeah. This part here was spinning when I would go to turn back the clock. You're not supposed to be able to turn it back. And it looks like Basically what has happened is the gear, actually the spindle that the gear is on, has simply come loose from the gear inside this housing. Because there's some resistance when I push it all the way down, but it's not nearly as loose as when it like rises. And it's not supposed to rise like that. It's supposed to stay solidly within the housing. Well, my guess is... It might actually still work. I haven't tested anything further after taking it apart again and playing with this for a little bit. But honestly, it shouldn't even be able to spin like it is right now. So my guess is it's not going to work. And suddenly you can very clearly see what's wrong with this thing. <laughs> that gear is cracked inside this housing. Which means... Yeah, this thing, this gearbox here is toast and is never going to properly work again. So, yeah, check that out. It kind of just skips off. What it looks like is this gear is actually supposed to ride up. Like, I'm going to try to push this spindle in a little bit. Yeah, would you look at that? I can't spin it manually anymore. Now I've got it riding up the way it looks like it should. Oh, and somebody wants to say hi. Hi, kitty. And yeah, this thing is not spinning by itself anymore. And it, I, I'm not pushing it super hard, but the pressure I'm putting on it, it was easily moving before, and now it is not moving at all. So I'm just looking at the other gears now to make sure they're not all broken either. They look good. The heck, this thing might actually work after all. I'm going to give it a shot. You can see the main drive gear in there. Yeah. So I'm going to put this thing back together again and see if maybe I can get it to work after all. And of course I got my friendly little helper here. Who's just watching me do all of this? <laughs> yep. He's my cute little lover. Cute little helper. We well, can't see because he's black. He's so black you can't see him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see what he sees. Yep. Yep. He's gonna attack the string as usual. Because every kitty does. Yep. <laughs> He's like half-hearted. I don't care. Just pet me. <laughs> he fits perfectly on my armrest. And his paws just hanging over. Yep. Needy paws. Okay, back to this. And now for the first time, we can actually see each of the individual gears turning. You can't really see the ones on the bottom turning too well because they're turning too slow for the naked eye to really detect. I can always speed this up a little bit. But the cool thing is, it's working. It's freaking working. And I can't turn it back anymore. I can't turn the clock back. And there's actually an extra click now when I turn the clock forward. 
and it's not as easy to do as it was before because there's also a click coming from in here that wasn't there before another anti turn back feature that wasn't active before because the spindle or I don't know what they call those things that go inside the gears to hold them in place but anyway this thing is working now <laughs> that's pretty freaking cool there you go <laughs> awesome so I'm gonna put this thing back together after all and use it sweet now I'm pretty sure this guy used to be a lot brighter I can't tell what kind of bulb it's supposed to be but those actually look like heating elements not filaments so I'm not sure if this used to be some sort of xenon bulb or what it used to be but it's not very bright anymore despite what it looks like here <laughs> yeah and the camera brightens up now anyway yeah not sure but it doesn't light up much and I might go ahead and replace them with LEDs like I'm trying to do in mine time to put it back together Man, this camera's got some issues. Like, serious issues. Whoa! Dude! Wake up and work normally. <laughs> Man, this thing's got some problems. I'm working on the internal memory right now. Well, I'm doing something on the internal memory. I don't know if it's working or not. <laughs> Crap. This thing is a piece of junk. Barely working at all. Yeah. <laughs> You're so dang cute. Yes, you are. You are so dang cute. Yeah. You're just so cute. Oh, goodness. To prevent fire or electric shock hazard, do not expose this product to rain or moisture or disassemble cabinet. No use or serviceable parts inside. Refer servicing to qualified service personnel. Screw that! <laughs>